Hello folks and welcome to Tully River Quail again. I'm going to show you some incubator things that I've learned. Um, here's just some of our chicks. But let me spin around here to the incubator. And I want to talk to you about the little pip holes that you get in some of the eggs. And uh, at what point do you help them and what point is it too late? So if you can take a look in here. I've identified four eggs with some pip holes in there. Now, I don't believe these guys are alive. What I've done is rotate them, kept them in the front row here, and I'm leaving the incubator door open a little bit, and I watch them for a little bit for any movement. I don't see any movement. These guys, I'm in the morning here, so I'm just coming out. But let me get one of these guys out, and I'll show you what I think's going on. So here we have an egg that you can see there's a, the egg sac is kind of a dark yellow. So what happened is this bird embryo grew so large, especially with these jumbo birds, they grow so big that their nose will actually poke a hole before their body's ready to form. So sometimes you can catch them before this gets hard and kind of encapsulates their nose. But uh, let me just open this guy up and show you. Now, this looks like he was arranged pointy side down. So maybe that was the reason why his nose poked through. But I'm not expecting this guy to be alive. Um, as long with the other ones. Or also, sometimes you can see the movement. And if you see the movement in there and their nose little, you know, moving around, then I let him go. But... Uh, like I said, this has been overnight, so I probably didn't catch this guy early enough. Or, again, he probably wasn't developed. But when you open these eggs, you want to be very careful that you don't pull hair or wings. <laughs> now, if he was alive, he'd be wiggling right now. But he's dead. And you can see his, his gut's not fully formed. I mean, if this guy would have came out at this point, he would have been alive and that would have been okay, kept in the, brew or the incubator for a little bit. Um, but he just got too big for this small shell. And before his body formed, he poked a hole, kind of started to need oxygen inside the egg they don't once they poke that hole they do and if he's not ready to come out he's not gonna come out so let's just take a look at another guy see if we can catch one that's still alive again once again we have one that has some dark spots around it <clears throat> this is white in the very beginning then it becomes yellowed after it gets dry and again this is all almost looks like his head's down in the pointy end um, if he was oriented in the larger portion of the egg maybe his nose wanted to poke through and again i'm looking for some signs of life No signs of life. Now this is day three of my hatch, so I'm okay opening these guys. Because if they didn't hatch yet, they're not gonna. Uh, this guy just has some spots on the outside, so I'm putting him back in. <clears throat> Well, here's a guy who has a little pip hole, but it doesn't look like he's been encapsulated in there. But again, once they open up to the oxygen and they have to start breathing the air, that just screws everything up in there. <clears throat> Excuse my little long COVID. Now yesterday, again, if I was more active at this, if I didn't have to sleep at night, I might have caught these guys. But again, they're probably not formed. It's just that these jumbo birds grow so fast, 
so big, so fast that and you can just see this guy's not developed. He's not moving. He's just dead in there. So, yeah, you'll have that. Um, it's nature. Sometimes what I'll look for is a heartbeat. I don't, I don't see any heartbeat in here. So sometimes you can catch them pumping like that. And even if they do have a little bit of their gut still out, um, they can survive. They, I've had lots of birds come out with a little bit of their gut protruded and their body will shut that off. <clears throat> and then that'll just drop off or even sometimes it'll become pedunculated. Basically have a little stalk to the base of the the body and if you can tell there's no blood supply running through there after it's very like a small base then you can actually cut that off with a pair of snips or something and as long as they're not going to bleed to death but you know again the best thing to do is not touch anybody not let them uh not interfere but sometimes you kind of just have to because that inner eggshell will get dry and they'll get stuck in there and they won't come out but nature does it best so anyway here's some of the guys that we got from that hatch and there's lots of them in there and some other ones from a couple days before so we've been hatching birds like crazy here just because it's chick season and uh, we usually don't aren't able to keep that many of them because a lot of people weren't getting them but we were away for a week a weekend and weren't able to focus on meeting people so anyway over and out Tully River Quail just wanted to share some stuff with you and uh, hopefully that'll help explain some of the stuff that you're seeing in your incubator stay free